Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Today's video about my recently installed one phase 10 kW good V uh, inverter. It is MS series inverter. Uh, inverter has three strings, single phase and 10 kW maximum output. In my previous video that I will link above, I was asking you if you would like to know any differences in my own view or from my own perspective between Fronius that I have my previous property. It was Fronius Prima 5 kilowatt version and Goodby Inverter. And using it for a while now, I do have a really good perspective. And uh, I would like to discuss with you initial thoughts and maybe then we'll be um, follow up video with um, all your questions that you would like to um, ask and you'd like them uh, to be answered. The only reason why I make this video is because before installing the Goodwin inverter, I try to find any information on the internet and could not find any. Uh, most information would be either from installers or from a uh, supplier um, themselves and information is not really uh, helpful in, in a way it's more like promotional rather than um, helpful for consumer or questions that you may uh, would like to ask so let's start from the beginning and what I would like to do I'll go um, between Fronius and Goodway because first of all I, I describe why I, I choose Goodway and not Fronius and any other inverter and the reason for that uh, second will be comparison and third my uh, personal opinion and circumstances that you may consider. So let's talk about uh, why Goodway uh, inverter out of all inverters that um, available in Australia Mind you, I'm from Brisbane, Australia, and uh, that was the main reason to choose Goodwin Inverter. Every state in Australia has different rules of uh, exporting electricity. Uh, in Queensland, I think we're a little bit uh, more lucky than uh, some other states. I'm not sure if all states or only some states prohibiting you to um, install more than five kilowatt on single phase and it used to be in Queensland now in Queensland you can install more than five kilowatt inverter uh, but you have to ensure that you limit your export up to five kilowatt and that exactly uh, is my reason to uh, uh, why I purchased Goodway inverter so Goodway can handle 10 kilowatt that particular one that I purchased um, it can be oversized by 133%. What that means, you can put up to 13 kilowatt um, capacity of panels on a roof that the inverter will be able to handle. Uh, the inverter itself will be uh, 10 kilowatts and inverter has the uh, ability to limit output that you export to network to 5 kilowatts. So, all the things are, were really crucial for me to ensure that within single phase environment I can maximize my um, curve of export. Usually it's kind of bell curve because when sun rises and system is small-ish it ramps up slowly and it's kind of peaks at 5 kilowatt uh, in the middle of the day and then kind of slows down and it looks like a bell and, and that's why they call it a bell curve. What I want to achieve, I want to achieve like almost like a rectangle. So when sun rises in the morning, because it's so oversized, it quickly gets to five kilowatts, so almost like a vertical line, stays at five kilowatts all the way during the day, and then close to the evening, almost like drops to uh, zero. It's in the theory, it's the best uh, case scenario. That's one reason why I wanted oversized the system. The second reason is whatever you produce more than five kilowatts, you can use within household. Uh, and if difference between production and export um, is smaller than your usage, that means you're using for free and not borrowing from exporting um, capacity. So for example, if I'm generating nine kilowatts and I run uh, two air cones and I consuming 
uh, to the 3 kilowatts, right? I still can export a limit of 5 kilowatts without any impediment and I actually can see it in the graph here. Another reason why I chose Goodway inverter, it's one of the not many inverters that uh, allow you to put uh, three strings. Uh, there are limitations what you can put on each string for almost any inverter and um, there's a very small limit or tiny limit uh, of your creativity that you can go with and it's really hard if your house is not completely facing north or a roof is not big enough um, it's really hard to be creative how you position panels for uh, optimal generation so for example my house uh, very narrow uh, and long and that narrow bit facing north so I don't have north exposure but I've got very large east and west sides so what I want to do is uh, kind of equalize it between east and west and still with the uh, uh, three strings I, I run into trouble so uh, let's talk about capacity I've got uh, 34 panels of 390 watts uh, together they're just above 13.2 kilowatts in total of potential production capacity. So 13.2 kilowatts potential production capacity with inverter of maximum 10 kilowatts and it's limited by uh, limited in the software uh, to output not more than five, right? Uh, I could not equalize panels because it's only three strings and my roof sides are equal and I could not break the third string to have half and half so I had to choose where I put more panels on east where sun rises or on uh, west when sun sets and I've chosen to put 70% um, of the panels um, 24 out of 34 uh, and on 24, 12 and 12, yeah, 24 panels I just put on the west side and um, 12 panels on, uh, sorry, 11 panels on, uh, 12 panels, 11 panels on, on east, doesn't really matter. And the reason is that because um, majority of the winter when generation of solar is very low, sun rises kind of east-north and most of the time spends north-west. So majority of the lower production happening between north and west and I want to maximize winter production because summer you almost don't have um, any trouble to generate a uh, good amount of electricity. So um, the breakdown is uh, kind of like that. I've got 9.3 uh, kilowatts on west and around 4.2 kilowatts on east. And the idea is as sun rises and moves towards north, it's kind of inefficiently splits uh, generation from east and west, but east responds well in the morning and west responds well uh, in the afternoon and in the, in, the, in the middle of the day when none of them optimally covered by sun, both sides are triggered, so production is good as well. So, um, on a sunny day, uh, I generate approximately 35 to 45 um, kilowatts. Uh, depends on my consumption, uh, most of it would go to the grid because most of the consumption that uh, happening on a sunny day would be above 5 kilowatts and that's the whole idea of it, uh, to consume your own power. Um, how do I consume most of the power myself? I try to run dishwasher, washing, dryers, ironing, all of that in the middle of the day and try to minimize my um, consumption during the night, morning and evening. Uh, look, I don't obsess really with um, uh, nitty gritty of uh, saving everything, but uh, so far looks uh, like a good generation of the power. Now, compared with Fronius, um, what I did not like uh, 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 did not like about Fronius and still don't like, and I still don't understand why people choose Fronius. First of all, uh, from warranty perspective, both of them got five to ten years warranty. What that means 
you've got five years warranty on the inverter and additional five years warranty uh, on parts that means that you need to pay a visit for a technician to visit uh, and check inverter and if it's faulty they'll fix it or you need to send away and they'll fix it and, and need to reinstall it I think Fronius recently changed the policy and uh, they would take care of it. I don't really worry about this good with a good brand, but also I think if something happens, my installer would uh, take care of that. So warranty would be, let's say, almost identical for both of them. What's not identical, uh, Fronius uh, is much more expensive than Goodway. And um, I'm talking about 5 kilowatt version of uh, Fronius way more expensive than 10 kilowatt version of uh, Goodway um, and that's the point of differentiation if you on budget because unlike panels the efficiency of inverter and, and, and operation not that measures as long as it performs well I think efficiency would be within two to three percent tolerance there uh, what is really really visible and uh, important to me and, and that's the point where I could not compromise. Many people, including myself, were complaining on how noisy Fronius inverter is. Um, good we had a passive cooling, which is like big heat sink at the back of the inverter, when Fronius has a fan cool system. In the middle of the summer, that system is so noisy and high pitching that it's almost impossible um, uh, to, to tolerate it. Most of the furnaces are installed in the garages and that even exacerbates a uh, level of noise. So um, that's the uh, main reason why I would not recommend furnace inverter because that's just really annoying. Good with squires, uh, I monitor temperature on the inverter. Uh, now we're in the winter cycle at the maximum production capacity. It still stays uh, at around 37, 40 degrees internal temperature, which is quite good. So um, we covered warranty, we covered operation. Fronius, I believe, also two string inverter when good with three strings. So if you would like to stretch your um, panels on west, north and east sides, good with the best inverter for you because it will natively absorb every single string uh, of, the, of the setup. When uh, with Fronius you need to, I think, make, make virtual strings and it's not quite native and there are some troubles that probably electricians would be um, better explaining to you than me. Uh, but when you've got native support for three strings, um, I think it's a better way to, to handle capacities and especially when you got uh, um, uh, partial shadowing of the panels um, so you're not impacting the whole string and you don't have um, uh, special devices that uh, control uh, shading of the, um, of the panels. So um, in the beginning of the video I posted the picture of my inverter. You can see you've got two isolators, uh, basically those are DC isolators you've got a bunch of uh, cables coming under that's the three strings coming in there's a two wires um, I'm not sure what they are uh, and there's a big module uh, in the bottom is Wi-Fi Wi-Fi approach uh, or a monitoring approach between Fronius and Goodwill a little bit different and I'm not sure which one is better which one is worse um, I think um, Fronius has got a little bit better presentation, but uh, if you don't buy additional Fronius uh, uh, kind of meter, that you don't have that monitor, and that's a downsize. Even you've got Wi-Fi module in a Fronius, if you don't buy smart meter, you cannot see um, how um, your system operates well. With good way, uh, it's quite native, but uh, output is very, I would say, poor. So uh, it does not have um, auto refresh or graphic representation of current output. You need to refresh screen to see how much you generate. But graphs are the same. You've got daily, weekly, monthly graph and other functions there. So um, to conclude, I think it's quite a long video and I'm sorry about that. Uh, system performs well system staying cool um, today is very um, I guess rainy day 
and a uh, day like that um, uh, Fronius probably would be producing to 300 watts out of 6.6 uh, .6 kilowatt that was on my roof uh, Goodwood produces um, with my setup I've got currently right now between 1 to 3 kilowatts which is um, uh, benefits of oversizing it day like yesterday when it was completely sunny it picked at 5 kilowatt and everything that I used inside the house was used um, um, between that maximum 5 kilowatt generation and what uh, my system produces so so far I'm happy about that um, this video again uh, has very little information about um, uh, particulars of the setup and, and and other things this video is to instigate questions this video is to instigate um, discussion if you just about to choose solar and you would like to understand more which inverter to choose and what setup appropriate to you of course I encourage you to talk to a professional uh, but the reason of this channel is I don't have any financial incentive to promote one product or another to you while installer might have uh, kickbacks from uh, suppliers or uh, particular benefits from uh, certain brands so if you just about to install a new system or like me moving from one system to another feel free to ask questions down below feel free to share my video and uh, i'll create more videos like that uh, for people with that considering a good way inverter or would like to know more about Fronius. Well, uh, it's enough for today. Thank you so much for watching. Greg from Brisbane, Australia. Until next time.